Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to my tutorial on the differences between HTML and XHTML. XHTML stands for Extensible Hypertext Markup Language, and at the end of this tutorial, you will be able to tell people that you know how to write Extensible Hypertext Markup Language version 1 strict that is W3C compliant. Doesn't that make you sound impressive? After my previous tutorial in which I taught you HTML with over 50 different tags in under 15 minutes, there were a couple things that were brought up by you guys out there. One of them was that whenever you are writing HTML, you actually should not have this closing tag right here, and that is indeed true if you are going to be writing traditional version 4 HTML. However, with XML, you always want to put it in there, and that's why I made that little mistake. Also, in any meta tags, you want to get rid of that if you are writing HTML, and you would also eliminate that closing tag in any links as well as images. Only two other things came up in comments that you guys wanted me to cover, and one of them was how to link to different parts within the same page. Well, I'm going to show you how to do that here right now. And you can see on the right side of the screen, this is basically what was left over from the last tutorial. But if you wanted to create a link to another part of your page, you would type in H reference. Again, this creates a link equal to, in this situation, I'm going to put pound, and I'm going to type in great stuff right like that, that simple. And I'm gonna then go to great stuff. And I'm gonna close that off, right like that. Okay, well, now I gotta put the location for where you're going to be sent to if you click on go to great stuff. And let's just go way down here in the bottom, right after all of these lists. So if I wanna create a location, I just type in A, and then followed with name is equal to, and then I'm gonna type in great stuff, Close off that tag, and I'll just type in great stuff, right like that. I'll save that, jump over here, and if I click on here, you can see right here the link, go to great stuff, and if I click on it, it will show the great stuff here in the window. Normally, this would be displayed at the very, very top, but the page ends right here, so that's the reason why it's not like that. So that's how you would create a link within your individual page. And the only other thing, I'm actually going to delete this out, that you guys thought I should have covered. You guys are very smart. And Tasman was the guy who saw that little error there when I put that backspace in. I want to give him credit. The only other thing you guys wanted me to make sure that I covered is how to create a link that would automatically open up your mail software to email somebody. And again, it's AH reference, just with any link, that's exactly what you would do. And then you click on mail to, and if I had an AOL account, this would work. And you just type in your email address. And if you would like to tag on a subject that would automatically be added to this guy, you could type in hello. And then if you want to put any spaces in a URL, you would put a percent sign followed by 2O. And I'm going to type in hello again. And then close that off. Send me a message. All right. And if I file save that and reload it, you can see send me a message is here. And if somebody clicks on it, it'll automatically open up my mailbox and send an email. So that is how that would work. So those are the two things you guys thought I should have covered. And I'm glad you brought those up. Now on to what I, this tutorial is about, which is XHTML. There really aren't major differences between HTML and XHTML, but of course there are some. And just so you know that what I'm going to do here is definitely going to be XHTML compliant. You can see here I already validated it. So I went to validator.w3.org forward slash check. And if you plug in your code, they will tell you if it is valid XHTML1 strict. Okay, so we know this works because I already checked it. Well, the next thing you got to do, you got to change your doc type, and I'm going to come in here. This is all the same right up until this point. Here, I'm going to put an X in, and of course, this is going to change to 1.0 strict forward slash EN, two slashes there. And just don't, so I don't confuse myself, let's just get rid of all this right down to this point. And then you're going to type in HTTP colon forward slash www.w3.org forward slash TR xhtml1 forward slash dtd forward slash xhtml1 dash strict. And this is just telling the browser what type of file that it is working with. dtd and then doink. Okay, and all this code is at newthinktank.com and it's located in the underbar. You can get it because I don't know anybody that types this in. Everybody just copies and pastes it. All right, then you got to make a couple other little changes. In your HTML tag here, you got to type in xml ns 
is equal to http colon forward slash www.w3.org forward slash 1999 forward slash xhtml xml colon language or just lang to find that you're doing English if that's what you're doing. And then you're going to type in lang is equal to, and again, English or en. So that's all fine and dandy. We come down here to this meta tag, which is in regards to your content type. There's a lot of talk about the content type actually being changed to application forward slash xhtml plus xml, but so forth. This isn't compatible in all the different browsers, so we're going to keep that the same. The other thing is with xhtml, you definitely always want to have a closing tag, which is this forward slash, and this is also true if you put any break statements inside. That's how you create a break statement, which skips to the next line. But then we move onwards. Any defining of styles of any type in XHTML is frowned upon, so you would not want that in there. You would instead want to link to any CSS files for any styling period. Everything else here is perfectly fine because I do have these ending tags here. So that's all perfectly fine and good. But as we scroll down here, there are some things that need to be changed. But you have to understand, I'm just going to type these out for you. XHTML doesn't allow you to use a couple HTML tags. Good thing is most of them aren't really used, commonly anyway. But occasionally people use center. You're not allowed to use center anymore. You're also not allowed to use font. You're not allowed to use frame. You're not allowed to use iframe. You're not allowed to use menu, strike, or strike, or underline. So those are the tags that you are not allowed to use that you would normally be allowed to use in regular HTML. And I provide you that just for completionist reasons. Also on top of that, you're required to have all your inline elements be placed inside of block elements. I'm going to explain this in a second. In the body section of your HTML, your inline elements are those elements that don't force a line break after their closing tags. And you can see examples of them here with the abbreviation and the acronym. That is why they're showing up all on the same line. See, there's no line break here. Something abbreviated ASAP, I want this. So this means they're inline. If they're block statements, such as H1 is a block statement, and you can see that here because there's a line break right here. Also, the paragraph tag is a block tag as well. So with XHTML, you have to surround all these inlines with block code, and that's not really that big of a deal. Jump over here. The easiest way to do this is just to put paragraph tag around all of the inline statements. So let's jump right here in front of abbreviation and put a P inside of there. And then let's come down here and close off the paragraph tag. Now this is all XHTML compliant. Remember, we didn't have to do this with the H1 tag because it's a block element. Another requirement to make this XHTML compliant is if you use block quotes, you have to surround the information that is contained inside with paragraph tags. And of course, you have to always put the closing tag each time that you create these guys. And also, you wouldn't be allowed to come in here, obviously, and put the paragraph tag out there. You want to always close all of your other tags before you create any new ones, okay? And of course, you're not allowed to use center, so we're going to get rid of that. And we're also not allowed to use the strike tag, so I'm going to get rid of that. But all the other tags that we have here on the screen are all perfectly fine, so we don't need to worry about changing any of those. And of course, we come in here in front of this emphasis tag, and then you can close these, open these, create paragraphs wherever you want to from that point on. But all of these got little guys, these inline statements have to be surrounded with paragraph tags. Okay, so now all that is XHTML compliant as well. Your image, so I have this image file right here also needs to be surrounded with paragraph tag. Okay, Everything else there is perfectly fine. And everything we do here in this list area does not need to be changed. That is also all XHTML compliant, and it doesn't need to be surrounded with paragraph tags. If, however, I have a link that I created, and let's just make it real simple. And previously, I put target is equal to underscore blank so that it would open up a new window whenever this link was actually clicked on. In XHTML, you're no longer allowed to use this target. You're able to get around this using CSS, but to make this XHTML compliant, you're not allowed to have that, sorry. And then we jump down to the form area, and here, to make this all HTML compliant, all we're going to need to do is put all of these guys, which again, they're inline. They do not force a line break. We have to put all of these inside of paragraph tags, right like that. And then you would just continue to do that over and over again for each one of those tags. Okay, so now all of those are HTML compliant. 
You'll have all of them surrounded with paragraph tags, and you're also going to want to put paragraph tag around your button and this hidden field. And if you do all that, your web page is now X HTML version one strict compliant. And like I said before, if you jump over to validator.w3.org forward slash chat, you can paste all of the source from your web page directly inside of there and check it. And it will tell you if you are X HTML one strict compliant. And if you are, I think what you get as a reward is you're allowed to put this on your website. So. That is how you make an HTML file XHTML compliant. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, till next time.